Welcome to Catalytic Leadership, the podcast designed to help leaders intentionally grow and thrive. Here is your host, author and leadership and executive coach, Dr. William Attaway. Hey, it's William, and welcome to today's episode of the Catalytic Leadership Podcast. Each week, we tackle a topic related to the field of leadership. My goal is to ensure that you have actionable steps you can take from each episode to grow in your own leadership. Growth doesn't just happen. My goal is to help you become intentional about it. Each week, we spotlight leaders from a variety of fields, organizations, and locations. And my goal is for you to see that leaders can be catalytic no matter where they are or what they lead. I draw inspiration from the stories and journeys of these leaders, and I hear from many of you that you do too. Let's jump in to today's interview. I'm so honored today to have William Vanderblumen on the show. William has been leading the Vanderblumen Search Group for 15 years, where they're regularly retained to identify the best talent for teams, manage succession planning, and consult on all issues regarding teams. This year, Vanderblumen will complete their 3,000th executive search. Prior to founding Vanderblumen, William studied executive search with a mentor with 25 plus years of executive search experience at the highest level. His learning taught him the very best corporate practices, including the search strategies used by the internationally known firm, Russell Reynolds. Prior to that, William served as a senior pastor at one of the largest Presbyterian churches in the United States. William, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being on the show. I'm thrilled to be here. Always good to talk to another William. Indeed, right? What a great right. name. And and you're one of the rare Williams like me that's not a Bill or a Will. It, and it's not a, you know, I'm not trying to be snotty. I just, I, I had a stubborn mother and uh, the other words just don't register. <laughs> exactly. Well, Bill is something you get in the mail. I don't want to be associated with that, yeah. right? Well, you know what I think of? This is how old I am, William. I think of... um the uh what was the school rock uh you remember the oh, yeah, schoolhouse rock yeah yeah schoolhouse yeah. rock yeah and i'm just a bill I'm just a bill <laughs> ordinary bill i don't want to be that that's right <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it that's brilliant well you know I would, I would love for you to share a little bit of your story with our listeners and i, I read sure. some of the hot points there but particularly around your journey and your development as a leader yeah, well, it's just getting started. Yeah, uh, would be the you know the the short version. Um, but I I think William, I I think that I would never be able to do the job I'm being asked to do now had I not done every job leading up till now. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, that's that's a, that's a so I just learned it by experience. But that's a great question. I think people should ask themselves as they're considering a job: Is this a job that is using every bit of what I've learned up till now? or not. And you can't always have that, but boy, if you can find one where you would never be able to do this job, if you hadn't done everything leading up, then wow. You know, uh, we would not be able to do executive search for pastors had I not been a pastor. We would not be able to do executive search had I not had some corporate experience and the list goes on and on. But uh, I think at my heart, and maybe this is part of your listeners, I I am a a serial entrepreneur. you know, I didn't want to go into ministry because I thought that meant like this, just from what I grew up with, you wear a robe, you try not to make too many people mad and you come up with some good things to say about God that make people think. And I'm like, yuck. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, God has a way of winning wrestling matches. Right. And, uh, he, he won that wrestling match. So I went into ministry and where it really clicked for me was when I I am so old that, uh, you know, Willow Creek and Saddleback and those churches were just sort of hitting their stride. And the idea that you would go reach new customers, for lack of a holier way of saying it, yeah. well, now that sounds like fun. Yeah. And I, I ended up with this, I can say it clearly now, I wouldn't have been able to say it clearly then, but hindsight, you know, the whole 2020 thing. Uh, I think I, when I figured out you could make a job out of trying to overpopulate heaven, that <laughs> sounded like a really cool challenge. And I, you know, so because I've always been in sales, always, always been an entrepreneur. I was the 
kid who I, I had a newspaper route. Yeah. One of the great losses in regulation of jobs and keeping kids out of harm's way at work is kids can't be newspaper boys or newspaper girls anymore. And that was just yeah. the best. Yeah. Nine years old. I don't know if you had that job, but <laughs> nine years old, I had to manage my own P&L. Like I went oh. to the newspaper. I bought a certain number of newspapers. I went yeah. and sold those. I had to collect. I mean, it, you can't make that up anymore. It's just the yeah. best job there was. And, and I was the kind of guy that... um this is how you know me. I was uh, this newspaper route. I was in a really small town in North Carolina and we had one customer at the end of a dirt road. It felt like it was about two miles long. It was probably 400 yards, but it was, it was long way. Right. And I, uh, at the end of the road, the town's so backward and small that there is no leash law for dogs. So they could just wander around. Right. And this one customer had a really aggressive dog and i was the highlight of his day every day i mean he just waited on me and he would chase me i'd never been so fast on a bike as those days and i uh <laughs> so then i realized you know what i can buy out the three guys around me that have paper routes and so i bought out their routes and consolidated them um, had the set, set the densest part in one route, made it mine, sold off all the other routes back to them. So they had, you know, closer to their home and all that and gave one of them the stupid dog. So uh, <laughs> not very pastoral, but uh, that's how really. you know who I am. That's, that's, that's me right there as a nine-year-old boy. So uh love that you're reaching entrepreneurs and you're coaching them. There's just nothing better. It's the backbone of our economy. It's, yeah. it's really what makes this country what it is. And uh, thank you guys and gals for what you're doing to, to go start things and try new things. And uh, uh, you know, it, it's supporting more than, you know. Yeah. I, I had the opportunity and the privilege to read your new book. Mm. And as I read this book, it is, it's called be the unicorn. 12 data-driven habits that separate the best leaders from the rest. And immediately you had me because you said data-driven habits. Mm. And I thought, yes, please. Yeah. What prompted this? What prompted you to write this book right yeah. now? A, a question that I've never been able to answer and then a pandemic. Mm. Okay. Uh, a question I've never been able to answer. I don't know, William, if you've, if you've had this happen, but a handful of times in life, I've met a person uh, at a, a dinner party or a social function or in an interview or whatever, but within five minutes, I just knew they were a winner. I don't know if you've ever had that. You just, yeah. within five minutes, like, yeah, now this one is special. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for a long time, I've wondered why, I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm not dumb and gullible. Why do my, why am I falling for this person within five minutes? Not in a romantic kind of way, but like, yeah. Why do I want to hire them? Why do I want to be around them? Why? Do, what makes a person that, yeah. right? And I've never been able to figure it out. Then we had a pandemic. So in our search work, if a church hires us to find their pastor or a school, the headmaster or the relief organization, their CEO, whatever it is, we do a search. Probably there are, for that one search, maybe 1,500 individuals that are potential OK, and then you do some research and you pretty quickly call it down to maybe 100 or 150, something like that. Um, you do phone calls, you do more research, you do uh, maybe Zoom interviews. All of a sudden you're down to dozens and not hundreds. Um, when you keep going down the funnel and get to the very best of the best, the top, say, eight or 10 in any given search, those people get an in-person, face-to-face, long format interview. Okay. It's just the way I was taught. It's the way we've done it forever. Uh, during the pandemic, there was not a lot going on for us. I mean, churches and schools are our number one and two client and they were all closed. You know what I learned? Here's a business lesson, entrepreneurs. If all of your clients close indefinitely, it will change your P&L. <laughs> <laughs> That's insightful. 
<laughs> and, and it'll free up your calendar. It'll free up your calendar. So we we downsized the firm. It was horrible. Uh-huh. And we did it all at once. So that was good. Don't don't drip your mm-hmm. downsizing, right? Yeah. If you got to do it, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we said, okay, we're going to, we could just close, but we're going to, we're going to serve churches. We helped them. We ended up being kind of the go-to resource on PPP funds mm-hmm. and several things that we just had to learn on the fly. And we still had some time left over. And we realized those long format face-to-face interviews with those top eight to 10 candidates, right? We realized we've now done 30,000 of those. And we've tracked them. We're kind of maniacal with our data. And we know where those people are. Have they done a job? And and we said, okay, 30,000. That's the best of the people that we've interviewed ever. Who are the best within that 30,000? And we figured that out. And then we asked the question, do they have anything in common? And the answer was yes. And the answer was nothing like I thought it'd be. And that's sort of what birthed the book. So, wow. yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's not William's opinion on what makes a cool candidate. That's not the book. And there, there are way too many leadership books out there that are like, just because somebody said it, then it's so. Um, this is a book that's pretty simple. And, and I'm glad and I've I've got uh, many clients, particularly the, the best preachers I know, make it look simple only because they worked really hard at it. Mm. So <laughs> the book may seem simple, but that's because there's been a mountain of research and three years of, of digging into what is it that makes those, we call it unicorns, those, wow, I like that person. What do they have in common? And the cool thing is, it wasn't what I expected. I thought it'd be, they're all super intelligent. Nope. Nope. No IQ barrier, right? Uh, Or they all had the chance to go to a really high caliber college or university. Nope. Uh, Or they're from a socioeconomic group or racial ethnic. Nope, 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 nope. Not even do they have great hair and shiny teeth. You know, like none of that. Oh, none of that was the, was the, the, common denominator it was 12 interpersonal habits that they all practice Mm -hmm. and that's where we came to what stands out in the crowd a unicorn but we're not just going to call it that we're going to say this is data driven and lots of research to show you if you practice these 12 habits you will be one of those people I, i i tell people all the time For 15 years, I've gotten paid to go spot the next unicorn for a team. Mm. Gotten pretty good at spotting them. Now I can teach you to become one. (laughs) And that was an unforeseen, happy circumstance of the pandemic. You know, I love I love that. And I will I will totally agree with what you said. The thing I loved about this book was the data driven aspect of it. This is not opinion. This is not anecdote. This is data, 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 data stacking under each one of these 12 traits. And I was like, okay, wow, so many different perspectives and angles. But you come back to it, and you're like, this is this is not refutable. Well, and it and it's you read the list of the 12 habits, you're like, duh, I could have written that. Well, you probably could have. I'm not a great writer, but I've got more research than you do. Yeah. That's and right. uh, That's right. what what we found is these 12 habits are common among unicorns and incredibly uncommon among the rest of us. Mm. just incredibly uncommon which means if you actually take this book and read it and apply it you will stand out of the crowd because no one else is doing it Mm -hmm. unfortunately most people true confessions moment i am one of those guys who bought a treadmill to become a runner and it ended up being a great place to keep the laundry that needed to be folded you know i think people can relate to something like that you know um but if you take, here's the data, this is all you have to do. And you don't have to do all 12 at once. You can figure out what three you're best at and lean into your strengths. You can work on your weaknesses, but um, hopefully it'll help a whole lot of people. It's mm-hmm. it's never been harder to stand out of a crowd than now. Mm-hmm. Um, entrepreneurs know this. Everyone's got a platform. The workforce is crowded. I'm too old because all these Gen Zs are coming. I'm too young because all the Gen Xers don't want me to have the spotlight. What? You know, AI is going to ruin my life. There's, it's harder than ever to stand out, and I think this book might help people uh, be able to stand out in a really noisy world. 
know, when you talk about the standouts, you talk about making yourself irreplaceable, making yourself indispensable. What are some of the ways that, that you talk about that you can do that? Yeah, well, first of all, the good news is these traits and habits are nothing that AI can do. Mm, I'm all good. for AI and that's tech good. and, you know, I mean, you know, human history is is full of cycles of we invent something that creates efficiency, it, it gets rid of some human jobs, and it creates more opportunity for different jobs. So, and that's what we're about to face yeah. on a massive scale. Yeah. None of these 12 habits are repeatable by a computer. They are human to human skills. They really are. And, and, you know, if you've, if you have entrepreneurs listening, they're the human soft skills. If you have pastors or followers of Jesus listening, it's kind of the second part of the great commandment. How do you love your neighbor as yourself? Not just be nice to them, but like be intentional in your relations. Um, and uh, it, in each of the chapters, you've got a, here's a case study on this habit in an entrepreneur here's what we learned from the unicorns. We interviewed them all and here's how you follow the next steps and path. So um, I think just reading the book is going to be a pretty simple guidebook for saying, if I, if I apply these things, I will stand out of the crowd. You know, this can be a little bit challenging to, to ask this next question, but as you look at the 12 traits, is there, mm -hmm. is there one that stands out as being the most important? I mean, they may be like trying to pick among your kids, you know, like which one yeah. you like best, but is there one that jumps out? Yeah. Well, super question. And William, I'm, I'm, I have what I call consultant's disease. I start down a rabbit hole and I just keep going until somebody <laughs> pulls me off it. So we had the pandemic. We got a lot of time. Um, we took the, once we had the 12 habits and we, it, uh, surveyed the unicorns to see like what are they best what percentage of them would rank this is their top habit what percentage would rank this so we had all that then we hired some uh psychologists and data analytics people we surveyed a quarter million people on these 12 habits so interesting because what we found between those two sets of data is uh there's one habit in particular that is least common among the unicorns and the single biggest blind spot for the general population. Mm. So self-awareness is the habit. Yeah. And the unicorn of the unicorns, like I forget the percentages, but it's the lowest score of this is my top gift. Okay. Of the 250,000 people we surveyed, 91% said that they were above average in self-awareness. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now, I don't know, man. I, you know, you probably got somebody that's got a math degree listening right now. I don't have one, but I'm pretty sure 91% of everybody is not above average at anything. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> so you see, you see the value of the data then yeah. it's like, yeah. I probably have a blind spot here yeah. and, and I probably need to develop this. And it is, I mean, you know, we don't, I've got a, a religion and philosophy degree behind me there, uh, which is super useful in entrepreneurship. <laughs> so I tell my kids, I, I got a, a sophomore in college. He's taking uh philosophy 101 actually with the same professor I had at Wake Forest. Oh, wow. uh, and he hates it and he's doing terrible and he doesn't understand why are we talking about this? This doesn't make any sense. And I said, well, you know what people with a philosophy degree do for their entire career? And what dad I said, they ask people, would you like fries with that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not super helpful for business, but in, in philosophy, I remember Socrates, you know, he didn't write anything. And there's very little, all of his teaching is oral tradition. He's he's probably seen as the cornerstone of Western philosophy. And the one teaching everybody agrees that he actually said was know yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he said it because it's hard. Yeah. Most people don't. I think you used to be a pastor, right? 
still am. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Do you, do you remember the first time you heard a recording of your sermons and you're like, that's not my voice. I don't sound that way. I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I believe I have burned all copies of those that were in existence. I am uh, so yeah. glad I finished my preaching before the digital footprint thing started because it was not... <laughs> No, I don't know why anybody came back to church, but uh, or or uh, or if you maybe there's somebody out there that plays golf and they've gone to one of these places that you can get film and see how you're. I first time I watched my golf swing, I thought, "Oh my gosh, this is horrible." So, you know, I think uh, having a way to study yourself and learn some self awareness it's really hard, but if you can do that man, you have set yourself way above the crowd. Yeah. And, 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 you know, as a first step toward that, this is not in your notes, but we continued down the rabbit hole and said, well, we've got all this data. I wonder if we could build a software tool, kind of like a disc or an Enneagram mm -hmm. or whatever, where people could take a, a, a really valid, structured, professionally done inventory to see what what are my top three of these 12 what are my bottom three mm -hmm. and so we built that and uh it's a really cool starting place to say here's my where i need to be better uh we even built a 360 version for teams where you know you could have your your boss take it about you and people that work for you take it about you and then you really do hear what your voice sounds like recorded because it's like <laughs> oh <laughs> but but it's the it's the first step i mean you so that's probably the least common gift and the most valuable and I'm trying to figure myself out right now. So, so, so on that for a second, like these uh, the assessment and the 360. Is this something that's available through? Oh, you sure. Guys? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go to vanderindex.com. Outstanding. Yeah, that's a super. I think it's going to be really helpful. I we've even designed it where it, this sounds kind of weird. We have seven kids, so everybody wonders if I'm Catholic or Mormon, but it's neither. Um, but uh, we we're taking it. <laughs> as a family oh, love that. which is kind of cool like yeah. and how do you guys see me and how do i see you and where do I, how what are we as a family are what of the three so it's it's going to be kind of a cool index we're pushing the book out right now because it's launch 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 but we didn't want to stop there i i decided when i wrote my last book i'm not writing another book without creating a software tool that helps people apply it mm, so good you know, I, I think in, in the family application there is really helpful too. I, my my girl, we have two girls, one in college, one in high school, and uh, they have both taken every assessment that you can imagine because I want everybody in the family to take all of them. And so we've done the Myers Briggs, we've done the DISC, we've done the Working Genius most recently. You know, sure, and so sure. now here's a new one we're going to take. I love this. <laughs> and, and that right there, that's you're so ahead of the crowd. I mean, we have more tools available to us to know ourselves than ever yeah. before. Yes. Yeah. And they're, none of them are expensive. No. So, you know, when you're in a job interview and someone says, tell me about yourself. Yeah. If you really know something about yourself and know what they're looking for, now you're not just telling your life story. You're telling how my wiring as a seven on the Enneagram or as a DI or as a whatever is this and and here's where I've excelled with that and that's why I'm excited about interviewing with you because you seem to have a culture that value well now wow you just gave a thermonuclear answer like it's boom because you took time to know yourself yes so good you know the first the first of the of the habits in the book the fast when i read this like the first thing i thought of was oh Wow, I don't know if I'm the fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not fast. I'm Dutch, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're we are we are built for wind resistance. You know, like <laughs> this is so. <laughs> oh, that's great. But but and I, I honestly don't know how the chapter order ended up the way it did. But I, I you could probably substitute a syn uh, synonym and say the responsive. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. And it's basically, do you get back to people or not? Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is nearly everyone stinks at this. Yeah. I mean, we're just horrible. We studied, there's data in the book. I won't bore you with it now, but we studied sales and marketing teams who literally pay thousands and thousands of dollars for software to 
let people write into the company and then no one ever follows up with the lead. When the research shows, if you get back to people within a minute of when they write in, yeah. you have an over a 98% chance of talking to that person yeah. and people just throw it away and don't respond. We looked at dating websites mm -hmm. and talked to like the eHarmony people and the, at, like these are sites that are solely populated by people who are trying to find a relationship and they're lonely yeah. and they don't get back to people. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's just, and, and over and over and over, we saw the unicorns are ones that actually just get right back to people. Yeah. And it's super valuable. Like, oh my gosh, you really got right back to me. So, yeah. I, I, I would affirm that. You know, I, I do a lot of work with, with marketing agency owners. And one of the things that they will often talk about in, in the group coaching that I do with them is the frustration they have with their clients who pay them to generate leads for them. But then the client never follows up with the leads. Yeah. They, they literally are paying money for these leads so that they can generate new business. But they just go into the ether. Yeah, huge study was done some years back. I don't think this is in the book of uh, people who use inbound software like yeah. HubSpot, Infusionsoft, sure. all those Pardot, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, the study asked the question: You know, the point of a of generating a lead is to have the next conversation, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just to have a sales conversation, and that probably leads to one more and one more. Kind of like evangelism is not. Mm -hmm. Do you love Jesus or not? It's long, multiple conversation relationship. So the question was, does how fast you respond to a lead determine how likely you are to get a conversation? Mm. And staggering amount of research done. And what they found was, if you get back to people within 60 seconds of them submitting their information, you have an over a 98% chance of talking to them. You wait 20 minutes, it drops to 60%. You wait... 24 hours, it gets to less than 1% chance of ever talking to this person again. Here's the punchline. Average response time for all the companies that were surveyed, 42 hours. Wow. They're literally throwing away any chance they have and the money they used hiring Pardot or HubSpot or Infusionsoft or whatever. If you just get back to people, you will win. It's shocking. Uh, wow. But that's where you get to these habits are very common among unicorns, very uncommon among others. And every one of them is attainable. Hmm. It's just not hard. It's just a matter of, you know, just do it. And that's, that's, that's another thing that jumped out at me in the book. You believe every one of these is teachable. Completely. Wholeheartedly. I think some are more aligned with personality types than others. Yeah. I, I am a little OCD about getting back to people. I am one of those that's, you know, fast or responsive or what do you want to call it? Um, I, I'm probably not the best at self-awareness. Hmm. So, you know, part of the reason we did the inventory was to say, where am I good? Where am I not? How do I create a development plan for myself? But none of these are unattainable. It's not like I can watch Tiger Woods study his swing when I tee it up, I am not hitting it like him. I don't care how much work I put in, you know, I'm not going to win the slam dunk competition in the NBA. It's just not going to happen no matter how much I work at it. It, these 12 though are so uncommon among most people and so attainable that I really think we've found like a little bit of a secret sauce to people standing out in the crowd, becoming a unicorn. Well, I mean, they move the needle. And the data shows that. That's right. If you, if you want to move the needle, here is the recipe. That's right. And it's a pretty simple recipe. Yeah. Really you know, we talked during the pandemic, Adrian, uh, we were all shut down. I had all these kids, right? Yeah. And uh, a couple of them, they're grown adults. But uh, she's like, okay, while we're here, um, you're going to learn how to fold a fitted sheet. You're going to learn how to darn a sock. You're going to learn how to, everyone's going to learn to make one of the family meals. You're going to learn how to cook a little bit. Nice. and our son was like, I can't bake. And she's like, baking's the easiest thing. You just follow the recipe and it will turn out fine. And he was like, he followed the recipe. It came out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty good. Like, yeah. And that's kind of this book. Just follow the recipe. That's all. You don't have to invent anything. Just follow the recipe. It will turn out fine. 
So somebody picks up this book, and I hope every one of our listeners will because it's worth it. What is the first step that you would recommend that a reader take to yeah. begin to stand out? I actually, I'm the longer I'm looking at this, I think the first step is to take that inventory. Yeah. Because then you've got a roadmap for how to read the book. It's not a sequential. You can read this chapter and then this one and this one and this one. And publishers are already like, we got to get a workbook out. We got to get a team manual. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be lots of resources coming out. But I think the inventory, I, I underestimated how valuable it is. We took it as a team here recently when it was in beta. And it's it's pretty cool. It's simple. It's not you know super complicated. It's 84 questions. Mm -hmm. But that might give you a place to start and say, it, it's some people are of the opinion you work on your strengths first. Okay, first work on your strengths. Others are like, well, I probably need to get better at these three, but you'll at least have a bit of a roadmap of where you're good and where you need some work. I love that. We'll have that link in the show notes as well so people can do that and take that assessment. Let me ask you, as far as you, William, like you're a leader, you're a leader at a different level than a lot of the people who are listening. You've been doing this for a while. You've found great success. You've helped a whole lot of people and you've got a massive amount of data that you've pulled from to help you move forward in the journey and serve your clients at a different level than you could 15 years ago. How do you continually stay on top of your game? How do you level up with the new, the new leadership skills that Vander Blumen is going to need five years from now from you? Yeah. Well, this is getting harder as I get older. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, one of the habits is agility, the 12 habits. Yeah. And I mean, the fact of life is every day I'm alive, I get less flexible. Mm. Yeah. Literally, like yeah. can't yeah. touch my toes as easily as I could before. Yeah. And that dog will hunt in a lot of different categories of life. Yeah, it will. So I, I think the older I get, the more I have to be intentional about stretching myself, surrounding myself with younger leaders. I think, you know, we've had people come and go from our company for many, many years. We have very few bad leaves. Uh, we've had a few, but but very few. We've actually, um, people we've hired and have worked alongside us have launched 12 different businesses after leaving here. Wow. So it's, that's, it's kind of fun. That's uh, you know? awesome. Yeah. Um, so they're like, ooh, I just learned how to do content-based marketing. I learned how, I'm going to go whatever it is they're going to go do. And yeah. and that's, that's kind of cool. But the one that stung the most, I think, of probably anybody that's left, was a young woman, uh, Krista is her name, and love her to death, serve as a reference, like no bad blood. But she was, uh, she just left to follow a dream job and move with her husband to a dream town and no fault at all. But she was on our lead team at 24. Oh, wow. And I can't tell you how much that challenged me and energized me and forced me into some agility that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think, you know, kind of constantly reaching down to the next generation and said, you know, I want to learn from older, wiser people. Um, you know, what's the old line? Why is wisdom wasted on the old and youth on the young? Uh, but uh, I, I think one thing I'm trying to do is lean into these younger generations that are so stinking smart yeah. and so quick and, and think differently than I do. Even down to uh, last weekend, we had the I forget what kind of eclipse it's called when the moon passes in front of the sun. Yeah, the ring got, eclipse. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so it, we only had a partial viewing of it here in Texas, but it got darker and it cooled off real fast and everything. And I was uh, playing in a golf tournament and Adrian and the kids were off doing something. I texted her, I said, it's getting dark. And then she sent me back a picture. I'm like, how did you get a picture of that? And she said, oh, I asked the 13-year-old and she knew through TikTok some video about how to do it. And they <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. so I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up, William, yeah. but I'm I'm committed to trying to reach down a generation mm -hmm. and trying to stay on top and then also trying to get out of the way and not be the guy that has to be everything. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things we're going to have to do five years from now, I have to be less essential. I have to be less relevant. Yeah. And I've been on about a 10 year journey to try and do that. I, I tell people I'm trying to become less essential every year. It's a little easier than my ego would like. Um, mm. uh, 
<laughs> That's good. <laughs> the, the world's going to change and it's going to yeah. change fast. And I don't know that I'm supposed to be the guy at the tip of that change. So I, I don't know. That might not be a great answer to your question. I'm, I'm learning as I go. I love that. And I think I think you you just illustrated so many of the things that, that we talk about on the show, the, the intentionality behind what you're doing. You're not just going to you know, think, well, one day I'll just wake up and, you know, it'll be the way it needs to be. No, yeah. you're going to be intentional on this. You're going to be purposeful in this. And then which goes with your, one of your habits of being purpose driven, right? The, the agility that you talk about this, this is, this is so critical. And so many leaders I'll watch lose that agility, that flexibility over time. And it's like, they just, they calcify in That's place. That's exactly the word. That's exactly the word I use. That is yikes. so good. Yikes. Like, is that really who you want to be? Is that the story yeah. you want to tell? Yeah. Not me. And the no. teachability, the humility and the teachability that you're exhibiting in this. Mm. These are things that I think every leader can learn from and should learn from. And if you don't learn from them, you will wish you had at some point. Yeah. I don't think anyone wants to just be an ordinary bill sitting yeah. on Capitol Hill, you know, Absolutely. it's like, yeah. So, so true. If if you could go back and talk to yourself when you were 20 years old, knowing what you know now, and you could tell yourself one thing, what would you love to go back and tell yourself? Uh, well, the problem with talking to a younger version of myself is when I was younger, I knew everything. <laughs> As did we all. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I think I'm a lot dumber than I was back then, but, uh, <laughs> you know, this is for my story. It might not fit for everybody else. Yeah. Um, but one, I, I don't know about the best or the single one thing I'd say, but one thing that pops into my mind as I hear your question is uh, slow down. Mm. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. Um, I think entrepreneurs... <laughs> If you're an entrepreneur out there, I think I know that your favorite book you've ever read. It's the one you just finished. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, and what does that, what does that translate to? You read a book and you go back to your team. We got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. And it just comes, you don't realize you're trying to share the newest, greatest, latest vision. And it comes off as too much, too fast. Yeah. And you know what I didn't realize, William? And I made this mistake in my early 30s, actually, so not 20. Um, if you go too fast, you can erode trust. Mm. Even if you never lie, mm. even if you're never deceptive. That's good. There are people on my team that need me to go slow enough for them to process. That's good. And if I talk too fast, eventually they start asking the question, what's he trying to hide? Mm. Why, why do we have to go so fast? I never knew that speed could erode trust. Um, and I never knew that, that you know, you really can sit and mull on something for a while and learn. You don't have to be moving thing to thing to thing to thing. So I think the younger version of me would probably already know this since he knows everything. But uh, slow down. That's what's top of mind when you ask the question. That's so good. You know, you're a continual learner. And typically on, on these interviews... I ask if there's one book that has really changed your journey, one book that mm. you would recommend that every leader put on the top of their to read list. Now, I'm going to put Be the Unicorn, right? Because I keep talking about that in this in this interview. I think it's it's really a critical book that's going to help mm. a lot of people. But other than that, is there a book that has made a difference in your journey that you'd recommend? Yeah, well, I'd say the Bible, right? Um <laughs> That's a good I mean, answer. Good answer. It's always the answer. We get, what are you reading that's really influencing you? We ask candidates and they say the Bible. I'm like, okay, except for the Bible. <laughs> I will say, you know, I've, I'm a one year Bible guy. I, I read it through every year. I probably think I'm a, maybe my 25th year. Wow. And uh, last year, my daughter said, are you going to read that again? I'm like, wow, I really stink as a parent. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> my spiritual leadership right there but uh i said yeah she said do you ever learn anything new and mm. i thought oh now that's really interesting and so i actually had a daily prayer that whole year i need to do it again god show me something new this day mm. 
I'm going to read the same thing I've read so many times. Just show me something yeah. new. And that's kind of a cool way to approach old yeah. text. Maybe it's an old book you've already read before. Yeah. What can I learn? There's always something else. Always. That's that's right. Good. Now, throw the religious piety out. Forget Bible part for just a second. I, I would say without a doubt, Atomic Habits is. Yeah. Just one of the best I've read. My, yeah. my friend Craig Rochelle, who's a pastor in mm -hmm. Oklahoma and yeah. this and other galaxies probably, but uh, <laughs> he uh, he does a leadership podcast and it's one of the top leadership podcasts in the in the country. Yeah. He only does 30 minutes. He only does it once a month. When he had James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits on, he went for an hour and 10 minutes. Only time he's ever gone over time. Wow. And I don't know if we just have the same interests or need to learn but uh i think atomic habits that's pretty good if you read atomic habits with be the unicorn then you could actually develop the 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 plan for doing the habits that here is a map for you follow these habits you will be a unicorn how practical how intentional how purposeful i love it i'm trying to learn as we combo on this today people typically walk away from an episode like this with one big idea Yep. If you could choose what that one big idea is going to be, what would you want it to be? Yeah, you can stand out from the crowd. Because I'm a nerd and have a bunch of data, I think we've been able to build a roadmap for that. And now it's kind of on you whether you're going to do it or not. I know folks are going to want to stay connected with you and continue to learn from you, William. And they're going to want to pick up a copy of the book. What's the best place for them to continue to learn from you, connect yeah, with you, so and pick it up? We never wanted to name the the firm after me. In fact, I'd said no. And I, I bought like 300 domain names. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And you think you got a lot of books? I got more domain <laughs> names than you do books. Oh, it, I need to get in a recovery group. It's not good. But uh, <laughs> like lifetime status with GoDaddy. Oh, God. <laughs> So I gave all these domain names to the search engine experts, right? Yes. And said, uh, which one's the right one? We'll name the company after it. We'll run with it. And they came back and they said, uh, good news, bad news. We found the right domain name. That's the good news. Bad news is it's your last name. And I'm like, I thought I said, no, 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 no. Here's out. Your last name is so screwed up. That <laughs> <laughs> that's how they said it too <laughs> that you can misspell it into google a hundred different ways and it will drive back to your domain and they were right so wow. how do you stay connected with it just try spelling google into vanderblumen into google just any way you want it will get you to our website there are probably four thousand free resources there on building and running and keeping a great team have them run with them get better from them uh, the book, same deal. It'll be on the top of the website. Uh, there is a website with all book resources. It's called uh, theunicornbook.com. But the easiest way is just, you can even do it on Amazon. Just try and type Vanderblum and it will get to me because it's, yeah. I used to hate my name growing up. Now I, I'm kind of thankful. That's pretty remarkable. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> William, thank you for today. This has been so insightful, so much wisdom you shared here, and you've been so generous, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me on, William. You're you're really good at what you do. You're easy to talk to, and uh, I appreciate you having me. Thanks for joining me for this episode today. As we wrap up, I'd love for you to do two things. First, subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you find value here, I'd love it if you would rate it and review it. That really does make a difference in helping other people to discover this podcast. Second, if you don't have a copy of my newest book, Catalytic Leadership, I'd love to put a copy in your hands. If you go to catalyticleadershipbook.com, you can get a copy for free. Just pay the shipping so I can get it to you and we'll get one right out. My goal is to put this into the hands of as many leaders as possible. This book captures principles that I've learned in 20 plus years of coaching leaders in the entrepreneurial space, in business, government, nonprofits, education, and the local church. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn to keep up with what I'm currently learning and thinking about. And if you're ready to take a next step with a coach, 
to help you intentionally grow and thrive as a leader, I'd be honored to help you. Just go to catalyticleadership.net to book a call with me. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Until then, as always, leaders, choose to be catalytic. Thanks for listening to Catalytic Leadership with Dr. William Attaway. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. Want more? Go to catalyticleadership.net.